Blair of the Mounties, a story of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. We present the 17th episode in Blair of the Mounties, in which we find Inspector Blair in an entirely new role. Beginning in the early years after the Great War, and steadily increasing through the next decade, the stream of deadly habit-forming drugs from the Orient into Canada and the United States has created a tremendous and baffling problem in crime detection. Assigned to special duty in connection with the drug traffic with headquarters in Vancouver, British Columbia, Blair has requisitioned his friend, Sergeant Marshall, to work with him. Very much worried at being called in to work in which he has no experience, we find Sergeant Marshall, as our scene opens, entering the office in Vancouver with his chief. There you are, Marshall. This is where we work. But this is a business office. Well, yes, I hope so, Marshall. But I don't see the idea. What's that name on the door? United Equity Company. Why, don't you like it? Why, yes, the name's all right. I'm glad you like it. Uh, you see, I invented it myself. Eh? Very appropriate. Equity is another name for justice. Get the idea? <laughs> yeah, but don't you have any trouble with callers? Oh, not particularly. Miss Guest handles that. Miss Guest? Yes, you'll have to meet her. She's over in Victoria today. Very efficient lady. Knows all about the drug business. Speaks Oriental languages. Worth her weight in gold. I see. Oh, she's in the service. Yes, very interesting woman. you like her. Look here, Inspector. I want to talk to you about this job. Fine. Sit down, Marshal. How's everything in Renfield? Oh, quiet as usual. How's my old friend George Redmond, the sheriff? <laughs> Same as ever. You know, I was rather glad to get away from George. Ever since that Sutton case, he's been a nuisance. How do you mean? Well, you know George. To hear him talk, you'd think he was the one that first got on to Clayton. <laughs> Good old George. But you're looking worried, Marshal. What's the trouble? Oh, it's this dope business. You know, Inspector, it's a highly technical game, and I don't know the first thing about it. Excellent. Yes, but listen, Inspector. It's a highly specialized business. A man has to be an expert. I've been 18 years in police work now. But when it comes to the drug traffic, I know less about it than the average city cop. So that's the trouble, is it? Yes, that's the trouble. That's funny. You know, three months ago, when I was assigned to this work, I was called to Ottawa to see the commissioner. He's a pretty big man, Marsh. I'll say he is. That's why I took a chance when I went in to see him. I came out flat-footed and told him I thought he was making a big mistake. You what? Yes, I told him I didn't know a solitary thing about the drug traffic. <laughs> what did he say? Oh, he just laughed. Said that was just why he'd picked me. Sounds a bit contradictory. Yes, that's how it looked to me at first. But the more I've thought about it since, the more I agree with him. Hmm, well, I hope you're right, Inspector. On that basis, I ought to be a first-class choice. But I don't follow that sort of reasoning. Look here, Marshal. The trouble of the world today, and modern police work in particular is that everybody's trying to be too smart and technical. Well, but one has to move with the time. In a way, yes. But look at the Mounted Police as an organization. We're rather an old-fashioned lot when you come to think of it. You mean the uniform, red coats, stats and hats and all that sort of thing? Yes, that's part of it. But it goes deeper than that. Our system is still the simple old-fashioned style. Yet, the old force still keeps up a pretty good reputation for results. Yes. I've often wondered about it myself. The answer is, Marsh, that human nature is the most important thing in crime detection. Whether a criminal uses a knife or an automatic pistol, whether he makes it get away with a dog sled or a high-powered car, he's still the same sort of human machine with the same kind of a brain. Yes, I see. Yes, there's something in that. There's everything in it. Look at modern police work in general, with its filing systems, scientific methods, and all that sort of stuff. And look at the criminals who get away. In a way, that's true. And look at modern trial systems, expert witnesses, psychiatrists, murder trials lasting for weeks. In the old days, it generally took a few hours. Well, but things were simpler then. Simpler, yes, but no easier. Just think of the old organization of the Northwest. Handful of policemen, a couple of judges, and a hangman. They wouldn't have known a psychiatrist from a load of hay. But they knew a criminal when they saw one. Well, we're getting off the point. We have a lot of work to do. Anything special? Yes, there's a lot of dope filtering into the U.S. from the Orient lately. Mostly through Seattle. What's that got to do with us? Now, the U.S. authorities claim it's coming in through Canada. Hmm. Just passing the buck, eh? No, I don't think so. They have some pretty good men on the job down there. And their system's ahead of ours. Certainly looks as if the bulk shipments come in here and are broken up for distribution across the border. The distributing plan seems to be somewhere up here. Hmm. Any suspects? Yes, we have one or two. I'll talk about that later. Frankly, Inspector, I feel utterly helpless in starting this work. 
Surely there's some technical knowledge necessary. Oh, of course. Don't misunderstand me, Marshal. In the running down of peddlers and all that sort of work, the city police forces are very efficient. And in searching ships and so on, the customs people have plenty of good men working. We've nothing to do with that. Then what in the world is our job, Inspector? The toughest of all. We have to go after the men behind the racket, if we can find them. Now I begin to see. Yes. We have an idea that the people who are financing and directing this work are pretty high up, probably very respectable. Sort of society job. Possibly. And now let me give you a few instructions. First of all, we're strictly undercover in this work. Plain clothes all the time. Know anybody out here? Oh, one or two friends. I'm afraid you'll have to keep away from them for the present, at least. All right, that's easy. What's the first job? Oh, nothing definite yet. I'm interested in a Mr. Abraham Parker. Suspected? Yes, he's our number one suspect at present. Leads a very respectable life. He's a director in the Fortuna Mining and Development Company. Offices in this building. I see. Where are the mining properties? Oh, there aren't any that I know of. This company has a new method for prospecting, sort of instrument for finding minerals. They seem to have plenty of money to spend and do their traveling by seaplane a good deal. Sounds interesting. Yes, it may not be anything, but I'm checking up on Mr. Parker. His movements are very puzzling. Got anything on him? Not a thing, except our tip from the U.S. authorities. They claim he's been connected with suspicious rackets in the States and Mexico, but they've never been able to get anything on him. Pretty vague business, Inspector. Yes, it's vague, all right. This fellow moves in good society up here. Since he came to Canada, he's been left strictly alone. Just to see what happened. Where is he now? Right here in this building. That's what puzzles me. Don't follow you, Inspector. All right, I'll explain. He left here a few days ago for Victoria. Left there by the boat that goes up the west coast of the island. Takes several days to make the round trip. But he landed back here 12 hours after he started out on that boat. Well, isn't there some other boat connection? No, of course he came back by plane. But I'm interested in the place he got off on Vancouver Island. It should be possible to find that out. Of course. But remember, we're working alone in this business. I don't want to cause any excitement by checking up through police channels. Miss Guest went over to Victoria yesterday. She's a regular ferret. But so far, I haven't heard from her. Well, I must say, Inspector, you and I have been on some strange jobs, but this is the limit. Sending a woman out to check up on a suspect. That's a new one on me. Yes, there's a little novel. But bear in mind, Marshal, we lead the life of tourists. Don't go near police stations or telegraph offices, except in emergency. You've got to learn to be terribly unofficial. Very well, sir. Why, hello. Good afternoon, Miss Guest. Good afternoon, Inspector. Ah. Now, see here, Miss Guest. What did I tell you about official titles? Oh, dear, I'm sorry. Well, don't do it again. This is my friend, Marshal, Miss Guest. How, How do, do you do, do Mr. Marshal? Hope you'll have a pleasant holiday with us. Uh, what? A holiday? Uh, uh, oh, 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 yes, yes, of course. Thanks very much. Fine, that's the stuff, Marshal. Well, Miss Guest, any news? Yes, Parker got off at Kittilat Harbour. Kittilat, I see. Where's that? It's only a little way north of Victoria on the west coast of the island. There's a small hotel there. Kittilat, yes. That sounds interesting. Anything else? Yes, he called on Commander Richford at Kittilat. And who is Commander Richford? He's a retired naval officer. Very eccentric, they say. Lives in an old house on Kittilat Lagoon with his daughter. Mm. I have a letter of introduction to Miss Richford. Nice work, Miss Guest. That means, I suppose, that you're planning a trip to Kittilat, eh? Well, of course, if you think it's necessary. Certainly, we'll all go. They say there's good fishing in Kittilat Lagoon. I think it's an excellent idea. The boat leaves Victoria tomorrow morning at eight. Fine. Get the transportation, Miss Guest. Remember, we're all strangers to each other. We get acquainted on the boat. Now, Marshal, we'll go uptown and get you some tourist clothes and fishing tackle. You mean that, sir? Certainly, and not so much of the sir. Oh, we're just a friendly party, going to have a nice little time up at Kittilat. And uh, don't forget your music, Miss Guest. Marshall's quite a singer. But see here, Inspector... Uh, oh, hang it all. Uh, when do we go over this case? Plenty of time for that, Marshall. Come on. Better straighten up in the office, Miss Guest. We'll see you at the boat. Bravo, Marshal, that's fine. Come over here, you two, and look at this view. Yes, isn't it gorgeous? All right, keep up the conversation. I suppose that's where your friends live, Miss Guest. Yes, that's the house across the lagoon. Quite a big place, apparently. 
See that girl coming up the steps? She's from that house. Then they got my message. Yes, keep talking, Marshal. Hey, George, look at those fish jumping. We ought to get some good sport tomorrow. Oh, yes, I'm going to try that new spinner of mine. Excuse me, are you Miss Guest? Yes, and you're Miss Richford, aren't you? Yes, I got your note, and it was kind of you to come. And these are two gentlemen I met on the boat, Mr. Blair and Mr. Marshall. Oh, how do you do? How, do you do? how are you, Miss Richford? Uh, you have a beautiful place, Miss uh, Richford. Uh, yes, it, it is lovely here, isn't it? Uh, are you staying long at Kidlat, Miss Guest? Oh, I never know, my dear. Traveling's my hobby, you see. I'll stay till the next boat comes back anyhow. Perhaps longer. I see. I'm so sorry I can't invite you all to the house. You see, my father's practically an invalid, and we never entertain. Oh, please don't trouble about that. My friend and I are thinking of trying the fishing in the morning, Miss Richford. I understand the stream and your private grounds is a good place for trout. I wonder if we might presume on so slender an acquaintance uh, to... Uh... Really, I, d I don't know... You mustn't misunderstand me, but my father is a, a, a little peculiar. I lost him. Oh, don't trouble him. By the way, I met a friend of your father's in Vancouver. Uh, Mr. Parker, oh. his name was. Fortuna Mining Company. Oh, yes. I, I know him slightly. Oh, really, Miss Guest, if you don't mind, I'll have to get back. My father needs attention constantly, and I'm afraid I must go. Certainly, my dear, I understand. I'll come down to the boat with you. Oh, no, no, please. Don't bother. I'll run back sometime tomorrow. Well, I'm done. What's the matter with that girl? Careful, Marshal. Somebody listening. Say something, Miss Guest. Hey. Marshal, there's something here. That girl was frightened to death when I mentioned Parker. Yes, I, I noticed that. Careful of these people in the hotel. Where's your gun? In my pocket. All right, be sure it's working. Tomorrow we'll get out on the boat where we can talk. And tomorrow night, I'm going to find out what's in that house over there. You have heard episode 17 in Blair of the Mounties. For the conclusion of this story, tune in for episode 18 of this series.